can see. Let me welcome you on the session on process capability today. What we are going to look at today is the difference between the short term and long term process capability. Let's take an example of a shaft which is 25 millimeters diameter which has got a tolerance of plus or minus 0 0.005 millimeters and then we are going to take certain samples of this shaft at a regular interval of one hour. Let's say at 8 o'clock we have gone to the shaft floor and taken about five samples. We call these five consecutive samples as the subgroup samples. Let's say we left the production for a while for about an hour or so and then we have gone back at 9 o'clock and took another five more samples and thereafter every one hour. Supposing if I am going to look at the variance of these five samples which is called as the subgroup variance, it may probably look like, like this. So it has got its own mean value and that it has got its own standard deviation at the time we have seen at 8 o'clock. Probably one hour later when we have gone at 9 o'clock, if I am going to see the variance of these five more samples, it will have its own standard deviation of sigma 2 and the mean value of x2 bar. As far as the subgroup is concerned at 8 am as well as the 9 am, we have got certain snapshot of how this process is performing. We have no idea what happened in between this duration between 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock and if I am going to go on with this production probably for about 8 hours or 9 hours that probably the picture may emerge in a different way. Let's look at the holistic picture of this process, how it is going to behave. At 8 o'clock, we had seen that this process has got a mean value of x1 and it had its own standard deviation of sigma1. And the same process when we have looked at at 9 o'clock has moved to another position having a mean value of x2 bar and having a standard deviation of sigma 2 and the same process at 10 o'clock has moved to another position with a x3 bar as the mean value and has got its own standard deviation it is sigma 3. That means the process is keep on shifting and drifting over a period of time when we have not noticed and taken a subgroup sample. If I am going to take all the shaft that has been produced by this machine from the morning till the end of the shift and put all of them inside a box and if I am trying to find out what is the overall variance of this entire production, the entire production that has been coming out of this machine for the whole shift will have a variance which is much more larger than the individual variance which we have seen at some particular point in time. If I am going to find out what is going to be the mean value of this entire batch of production which we call it as the population mean value it will be x double bar let's say and then if i'm going to look at the standard deviation of this entire population let's say this is called a long term standard deviation the reason why we are calling this as a long term standard deviation is this is a snapshot which we have seen at a particular point in time but this is a long term variance that we have measured for the entire shift with respect to the standard deviation that we have seen on the subgroups which have been taken at 8 o'clock, at 9 o'clock and sigma 3 at 10 o'clock. Supposing we are going to find out the average of all these uh, standard deviations that will look like sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square and sigma 3 squares etc. and taken a square root of this summation, you will get what is called a short term standard deviation. The reason why we are squaring the standard deviation because the standard deviation is not additive, only the variance is additive. That's the reason why we are squaring up and taking the square root of the whole thing. In the denominator, we will have the total number of subgroup sample that we have taken, which is the n value. The short term and the long term standard deviation thus calculated will show that the standard deviation on a short term basis is much smaller as compared to the standard deviation of the long term. The reason why the long term standard deviation is much bigger than the short term standard deviation is we are trying to find out the deviation with respect to 
the mean value of the entire process which is x double bar and if you look at one sample which is falling here will have a deviation of x i minus x bar which will be much bigger than a variation that is being measured from the mean value of this process. So thus we find the long term standard deviation which will be much bigger than the short term standard deviation. So far what we have seen is that the short term variance of a process is different from the long term variance of the process. We have calculated what is called a standard deviation which is a long term which shows the population standard deviation of a product which is being produced over a period of long time. And we have also seen what is called a short term standard deviation which is a snapshot of the process which was taken at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock and so on. Now let us look at how the process capability is arrived based on these variance that we have measured. What is process capability? A process capability is nothing but how many times this variance is fitting within the specification limits. Let us take this example which, which, which we have started the discussion. We have a shaft which has got a diameter of 25 millimeters with a variance of 0 0.005 millimeters given as a tolerance. If you look at this 25 millimeter is the nominal value of this shaft and the upper specification limit is 25.005 and the lower specification limit is 24.995. Let us say this is the standard deviation we have calculated for short term and this is the long term standard deviation that we have calculated. You will find the short term standard deviation is much smaller in unit as compared to the long term standard deviation. Hence the number of times the short term standard deviation will fit in within the specification limit will be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 let us say in this example and the long term standard deviation is 1, 2 and 3 times the standard deviation. That means the process capability of this which is the long term is 3 which we call it as the z value and the process capability of the short term where the z value is 5. So that means there is a difference of 2 between the two process capabilities. That means the short term process capability is 5, the long term process capability is 3. Let us look at the application of the short term and long term process capability. Let us say a machine A produces the same shaft and machine B produces the same shaft keeping all the rest of the parameters same. When we have looked at the z long term versus as compared to the z short term invariably it is found that the z short term is a bigger number as compared to the z long term and the difference between the short term process capability and long term process capability invariably found to be 1.5 and this is called z shift. Let us look at what is the application knowledge of the Z shift. If I take the machine A and the process at 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock has moved from this position to this position and 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock it has moved to this position and as you could see from the figure the variance of the process A is much smaller as compared to the variance of the process B and the amount of shift that process B is having is much bigger as compared to the process A. So what does it mean? That means the process A has got a better capability in terms of the subgroup variance and it also has got a capability of the shift that is happening. So lesser the shift that is happening, greater is the control in the process. Lesser is the variation as compared to a bigger variation in process B that shows this process is technologically superior than the process B and that is the application of the knowledge on short term and long term process capability. That is all we have for the session today on process capability. Hope that you enjoyed the session and you will be able to apply this knowledge in your processes. Thank you very much. Good luck to you.